and that's going to help you get better faster and then get even better than you were before your injury. messy oh well <laughs> mm. I just remembered I need to do my 2k subscriber giveaway just let me finish my date hello everybody and oh I don't know why my arms are like so wide <laughs> hello everybody and welcome back to my channel today is another daily vlog a day in my life as a teenage runner and the first thing I'm doing this morning you might be able to guess by my attire I'm going for a run and today is just an aerobic run so it's anywhere between like 8 and 10 kilometers. I'll just see how I feel. I probably need to try and do 10 because I need to get to 60 kilometers this week for like my weekly mileage. But also my legs are really really dead at the moment for like a bunch of reasons just like being tired <laughs> um, and so maybe I'll just do 8. Yeah. We will see. Anyway let's go. Woo! And also look at my outfit today. My outfit today is just like look so like vibrant and fluoro <laughs> I have just finished my run and now I'm going to do my stride out so you can watch me do my straight outs. finished stretching is finished and so now I am going to go and make breakfast yay Hi, so I'm currently outside wrapped in a blanket. I will explain later. So I've had quite a few people comment on my videos or message me on Instagram. And when I say quite a few, I mean three. But that's quite a lot for me. 
asking me about injuries and how to recover from injuries and if I've ever had any major injuries and how I recovered from them and how to get back to where you were before the injury. So I thought I would talk about that right now. So I've actually never had any really bad injuries. I've pretty much only ever had one injury in the whole 10 years I've been running and that was a couple of years ago. I strained a tendon in my proximal hamstring and that was due to like doing too much speed work too quickly and too early in the season. It was because I just changed coaches and the coach that I moved to did a lot more speed work than my old coach and I did too much of it too early and got injured. For that injury, I actually didn't have to stop running at all. Um, I just had to reduce my lows. So I reduced the number of kilometers I was running and I did more continuous running and less kind of start stop running and less speed. Um, so I just had to like reduce my load and then slowly build it back up again. And after a couple of months, I was kind of back to the training load that I had been at before my injury. Um, and I obviously wasn't running as fast, so I did build that back up but it didn't take too long to kind of get back to where I was before my injury. Um, and that's pretty much the only injury I've ever had. I did have, oh, hello. Okay, oh, mm, wonky and really bad lighting. Change of location. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much the only injury I've ever had. Um, I did have severs when I was younger, which is just a thing where your like heels get sore when you run, um, but that's not really an injury. It's just kind of a thing that like most young runners get. So I had that and you just kind of just have to deal with the pain. Um, and then I've had that recent injury that I talked about, but apart from that, I haven't had any big injuries and I've never had an injury touch wood um, that has made me have to stop running. So I've always been able to keep running. I've never like broken a bone or got a stress fracture or anything. So yeah, I've been pretty lucky, but it's not all luck. Really the main reason I've never got an injury is because we've always been super careful with making sure I'm not overtraining and making sure I'm fueling my body with enough food and getting enough like rest and recovery. Um, and just like looking after your body so that it doesn't break down and get injured because like most injuries are caused when people aren't fueling their body correctly or they're doing too much training, doing too much running and pushing their body too hard and not giving it enough time to recover. But anyway, I'm just going to give you a couple of tips to recover from injuries. I haven't, I probably should have thought about what I'm going to say, but I haven't. Um, so I guess I would say like, it's going to take time to get back to where you were before, so don't beat yourself up about it. It's going to take time, but if you keep just doing what you're supposed to be doing and then gradually like increasing your load and increasing your mileage to get back to where you were before, like you'll get back there, you will. It just might take time, so you have to be a bit patient. Try not to compare yourself to where you were before. So if you're doing if you're starting to do similar sessions post injury to the ones you were doing before you got injured, don't compare your times, don't compare your splits. If you're racing, don't compare like the times and the places that you're getting because like you've just gone through an injury, you've had to stop training, you've had to, you know, you've had all this stuff happen. So don't compare how you're going now to how you used to go because like you're not back there yet that's okay it will take time to get back there so yeah don't compare yourself to your previous self and also don't compare yourself to other people because other people have not been injured and even if some other people have been injured they're not going to have had the same injury as you so they're going to have a different recovery process so yeah do not compare yourself a big thing while you're injured, um, and this has never happened to me, but if you're not able to train or if you have to really, really drastically like reduce your load, um, try and work on another area of your body, like an area that isn't injured. So one of the main reasons I love running, yes, I love like running and training and competing and all of that stuff, but I also just love the feeling of kind of pushing myself and then reaping the rewards. So seeing myself get faster, stronger, better, etc. So something you can kind of do to still get that feeling is say you've got a stress fracture in your foot. That obviously means you can't really run and you can't do too many exercises like squats or exercises where you're standing. But instead, you could work on getting a really, really strong arms and core. Like you could do heaps and heaps of core exercises, heaps of push-ups and chin-ups and stuff like that um, to get a really strong upper body. And that is going to help you when you then um, are able to start running again. That's going to help you get better faster and then get even better than you were before your injury. And similarly, if you've like broken your arm or done something up in your upper body that means you can't do those exercises and you can't run, 
Then do heaps and heaps of squats and lunges and calf raises and get your lower body really, really strong. Do some cycling maybe if you can. Yeah, because if you've got a broken arm, you could probably not actually like cycle on the roads, but have like an exercise bike cycling like on the spot. Um, so yeah, get your lower body really strong. So then when you come back and start running again, that's really going to help you as well. So that's probably the biggest thing I'd look to do if you're injured is try and keep working on the area of your body that's not injured so that when you come back to running, it will help you improve faster and it will also mean that you're stronger than you were before your injury so you're going to get better, even better than you were, like you'll become an even better runner than you were before your injury. And also just because if I couldn't run, I feel like my life would be so boring so that gives you something to do as well. And the last kind of tip I'm going to give, because I don't want to talk too long about this because it's actually not something I've ever been through and it's really hard to talk about like things and empathize with people who are going through things which you've never experienced really. I mean, I kind of did. My injury was an injury, but I didn't have to completely stop running. Anyway, I would say when you're coming back and you're starting running again, try and enjoy it and try and run with friends if you can, because that would just make it more enjoyable for you running with friends and it will kind of take your mind off um, stuff that you might be worrying or stressing about um, with your running or just in life in general. Running with friends is always good. And yeah, just try and enjoy the process and you can do that by not comparing yourself. Um, try and instead of comparing yourself to what you were before your injury, compare yourself like each week post injury and try and improve like each week of training so that you're getting faster times in training like as you normally would throughout a season you're going to try and improve throughout the season but don't compare yourself to like last season because that was before your injury. So yeah, those are a couple of tips for you guys. Um, if you have any other tips or if you want to share your experiences with injuries, make sure you comment down below. Um, yeah, but I hope this has answered some of your questions because I have had three, I think it was three, three or four people ask me to talk about this, which is quite a lot of people for me. If I get like more than two comments about the same thing, I'm like, oh my goodness, the whole world wants me to film this video. So yeah, hopefully this helps. So I am going to do my cores now. Yeah. Ah, oh, oh, I didn't mean to record. I have a question, does anybody else ever always get hungry? Like every single day I get hungry around 3 p.m. And like even if I've just had lunch like 40 minutes ago, today I have had lunch like, it was like, well, it's currently almost 3 p.m. and I had lunch at like 1.30. But I just always get hungry at 3 p.m. and I don't know why, like no matter when I've had lunch. So it's, it's just really weird. And then I get hungry again later before dinner. So I get hungry at like 3 and then I get hungry at like, 4:30. It's it's just I don't know, but you know it sparked it sparked a thought in my mind that I wanted to share. Very often I hear people being like, "I'm really hungry right now, and I don't know why, but it's not like my designated eating time, so I can't eat now. I shouldn't eat now. I'm not going to eat now, even though I'm hungry." Which is just 
wrong <laughs> it's wrong hunger when you feel hunger it's your body giving you a signal to say go and eat it's like when you feel that your bladder is full that's your body giving you a signal telling you to go to the toilet even if that's half an hour after you've just been to the toilet do you go and sit there and think hmm is my bladder really full right now or no it's not my designated time to go to the toilet so i'm not going to go no you go to the toilet because you need to pee when you're thirsty that's your body telling you that you need to drink water do you sit there and think hmm well i had water five minutes ago so surely i can't be thirsty again i'm not going to drink for another hour no you go and have water and it's the same with when you're tired that's your body telling you to go to sleep and it's the same with when you feel hungry that's your body telling you you need to eat it doesn't matter what time of the day it is it doesn't matter when else you ate today if your body is telling you that it's hungry it means it needs some fuel so you need to eat so my point is don't question what your body is telling you if you feel hungry then that is a sign you should probably go have some food um so yeah i'm gonna go have some food actually that's a lie i'm not i'm gonna have a shower first because my body is also telling me it's very cold Old. Um, and I didn't have a shower earlier and I was in a blanket because my grandpa was over he was um, putting the mirrors on there and the stuff in the bathroom like I already said but yeah I just didn't want to have a shower because I didn't want to be in the shower when he was ready to leave because then I wouldn't be able to say goodbye so yeah then he ended up being here for three hours and I could have had a shower like at any time then but I didn't realize how long he was gonna be I thought he was gonna be a lot shorter anyway it's fine I'm gonna go have a shower now because my body's telling me I'm cold and I'm not gonna sit here and think why is my body telling me it's cold? I shouldn't be feeling cold right now. I'm just going to not do anything about it. No, I'm going to listen to my body and go have a shower. And then I'm going to also listen to my body and go have a snack. Yeah, okay, rant over. Also, why I was in a blanket before and not in, like, tracksuit pants or something is because... All of my trekkie pants, apart from one pair, which I'm using as my pyjamas because I don't own any pyjamas and so I don't want to put them on right after I've been for a run because then my pyjamas and... yeah. All of my other winter clothes and warm clothes and trekkie pants are all in the garage in boxes. And so that's an issue because I have no warm clothes and I'm always cold. So I should probably fix that by going to get them. But I can't be bothered to do that, so I'm probably not going to do it. <laughs> and I just wear, I don't know what I'm going to wear. And anyway, I only have like one pair of like nice cotton tracky pants. All my other pairs are like running tracky pants, so they're like a running material. And some of them are warm, but like I just... Mm, yeah, no, I don't know. Anyway, I need to get some more. Sometimes I steal my mum's because me and my mum are like the same size in clothes, which is, and shoes, which is so useful because I can steal her clothes and her shoes. Yeah, but then she gets annoyed at me. But like, that's probably because I don't ask, I just take them. <laughs> also, I need to, see, we, ha we really do have a problem. I just can't shower. As in, no, I can shower, but I just always like put off and off having my shower. Anyway, I just wanted to, one more thing, one more thing. Look, I'm uploading my YouTube video today. This one is how I recover as a teenage runner using foam roller, spiky ball and massage stick. Here is the thumbnail that I've just made. Oh yeah, there it is. Yeah, that's a photo I took today in the new mirror that got put up. Um, yeah, so if you haven't already watched this video, I would suggest that you go and watch it because it's a really good one. It's just like five minutes long and it's just about how I do foam rolling and how I use my spiky ball and massage stick to help me and my muscles recover and I need to go through my emails. That is really kind of stressful. But literally the amount of emails I get from, most of my emails come from, well, some of them come from like random clothing places like Cotton On that I was a member of like four years ago. But most of them come from Yale. I get like five emails a day from Yale. And also YouTube. I get so many emails from YouTube. Like, yeah, lots of email. And just, I don't even know, but I just get so many emails and it's really stressful and I just need to, I need to go through them. But I just like 471 emails. That's going to take so long to go through. Yeah. Mm. Ah, <laughs> just an FYI, I really need a new razor. It's a bit of an issue. I've had it for like four months, lol. <gasps> oh dear, we have a mirror issue. That I don't think, I think it's slipping down and it looks lopsided. Does it look lopsided to you? Does it look lopsided to you? Because it looks lopsided. Oh, by the way, peep the outfit. Um... I'm just trying to look at my mirror. I think it's falling down. <laughs> oh no. Oh. Get yourself one of these if you don't have one already. They are literally 
they are not a gimmick. They are so, like, useful. I love them. They're called Turby Towels. Get them from Coles, I think. Here is my lovely snack. We have a pack of popcorn, two lovely, delicious, squishy medjool dates. Focus. Thank you. Squishy, squishy, and deliciousy medjool dates, which I'm going to put peanut butter on. Um, yeah, with this knife here. See? So, yeah, let's do that. Oh. Oh, this is really hard to do with, like, one hand. But, yeah, you get the idea. Hello, so it's the next day now and I actually didn't film anything else yesterday. I don't know why, <laughs> um, but I thought the vlog is probably a little bit short. It's probably really not, but for my standards it is. Um, so I thought I would just film a little bit of this morning because I've got another one of my virtual strength and conditioning sessions with my physio. So I thought I'd just kind of film this morning as well as yesterday morning and then we kind of have like two mornings in a vlog. So yeah. And oh my gosh, I woke up this morning and Imogen Russell commented on the video that I made where I was copying her what I eat in a day and she subscribed to my channel. I am in shock. Like, it's literally made my day. It's made my week. It's possibly even made my year. Like, I'm like... So Imogen, if you are watching, um, thank you so, so much. That means a lot to me and it has made me really, really happy. So thank you. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Now we log on to my physio session. Um, so I'm going to do that now. Woohoo. My camera battery is also definitely going to run out. So, ha. Yay. <laughs>